All right, so you want to talk space drama. Well, today we are diving headfirst into this whole SpaceX versus FAA thing. We've got articles stacked high and, uh, well, they're about as explosive as a Falcon 9 launch. Let's just say that. It's like the government rule book um, collided with Elon Musk wanting to get to Mars right. by tomorrow. And he wants it now. And SpaceX, led by the always vocal Elon Musk, they're right in the thick of it, claiming the FAA is throwing a wrench into their Starship plans. We're talking about their fifth test flight. That's IFT-5. In-flight test for anyone who needs the SpaceX lingo. Right, right. But point is, this thing's stuck on the launch pad. And Musk even took the stage right at the all-in summit just to call them out, basically saying the FAA's paperwork moves slower than, well, I don't know, a glacier. Slower than a snail. To really get a feel for how tense things are, SpaceX is saying Starship was ready back in early August. All prepped, ready to go. Raring to go. But the FAA, they won't give the green light until November. November? Are you kidding me? We're talking about a three-month delay. That's wild. I can barely wait three minutes for my coffee in the morning. And here's the real kicker. SpaceX isn't just sitting around waiting. They're already prepping Starship number six. It's like they're saying, We're moving on without you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Catch us if you can, FAA. And they're not being quiet about it either. SpaceX's blog post about the delay, let me tell you, it does not hold back. They call out the FAA for what they call, get this, superfluous environmental analysis. Like, come on, what does that even mean? Basically, unnecessary environmental studies. Right, right. But they didn't stop there. False and misleading reporting. And even bad faith hysterics. I mean, they really went there. They did. And that tone, that frustration, that's really telling. I mean, it reveals just how much pressure SpaceX feels like it's under. They're basically saying the FAA is so bogged down in red tape, they're letting it potentially impact you know, actual safety and progress. So they're saying the FAA is grounding their rockets because of, like, bad online reviews. I don't get it. No, not exactly bad reviews, but their point is the agency is being overly cautious to the point where it's hindering progress. And maybe because they're afraid of, you know, bad press if something goes wrong. Yeah, I mean, rocket launches are inherently risky. The FAA has got to answer to the public if something goes wrong. Mm. Now, in fairness to the FAA, they are trying to adjust to this whole private spaceflight boom. They've asked for a pretty big budget increase, something like $57 million for their licensing office, up from $38 million. Plus, they've hired, like, a whole bunch more staff. Yeah, and that just goes to show how much the demand has exploded. It's not just SpaceX. We're talking about the entire industry going supersonic here. The FAA, they're actually predicting three times as many launches by 2028. Wow, that's incredible. So are they spending all that extra cash just on SpaceX? Tell me they're not. Well, buckle up. Because Daniel Murray, who heads up the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Office, he admitted that 80% of their overtime hours go to, you guessed it, SpaceX. 80%? Are you serious? I am. So is the FAA really dragging their feet? Or is SpaceX just that demanding? I mean, are they pushing things so fast that the FAA just can't keep up? That is the million or maybe billion dollar question. It's got to be a little both, right? Yeah. The FAA has to prioritize safety, especially with something as complex as spaceflight, and that takes time. But then you've got SpaceX with Musk's, let's just say, ambitious timelines. Mm -hmm. They operate at a speed that kind of throws those traditional approaches for a loop. So much overtime, huh? Hundreds of hours every month, and the FAA is paying for it, even if it is SpaceX driving it up. Kind of a weird situation, don't you think? Look, it really highlights the core issue here. So SpaceX is saying the FAA is slow and inefficient, but they're the ones kind of stuck footing the bill for it through all those launches. It's true. It's like this strange paradox, right? You've got the FAA, a government agency, and they have a set budget. They've got to be responsible for the whole space industry, not just one company. Right. Even if that one company is run by Elon Musk. Exactly. And then on the other side, you've got SpaceX with tons of money and Musk with well, his drive. And that can clash with how government regulations usually go. It's slower, more methodical. It's like the unstoppable force and the immovable object. Yeah, kind of. And speaking of clashes, the FAA actually hit SpaceX with a huge fine right in the middle of all this. That's right. Over 600,000 bucks. Big money. For violations on two launches from last summer. Yeah, last summer. Satria 1, that was back in June 2023. And then the XFE Jupiter launch in July. A whole year ago. You think maybe the FAA is trying to, like, show SpaceX who's boss? Well, it's possible, right? The, the timing is certainly uh, 
interesting to say the least. The FAA claims SpaceX made changes to how they do things and to their, what's the word, infrastructure yeah. without getting the okay first. They did. So what do they do? Just go rogue. Give me the details. Okay, so for the Satria 1 launch, they added a whole new launch control room and they, uh, they also tweaked some of their procedures before launch. Oh, so maybe they just forgot to mention the new room? Maybe. But the second one, that's a little more, I don't know. You're talking about the XIV Jupiter launch. Yeah. Yeah, so for that one, SpaceX used a totally new rocket propellant farm. That's where they keep all the fuel. Without asking. Without asking. That's that's rocket fuel. Even I know you can't just mess around with that. Right. It's powerful stuff. Yeah. And anytime you change how it's handled, it has to be checked out mm -hmm. for safety, for the environment, everything. So the FAA is saying, hey, this wasn't just a little mistake. But SpaceX isn't just going to take it. They're basically saying the FAA is just mad because they got called out publicly. They said it wasn't fair. They even sent a letter to Congress about it, a oh. really strongly worded one. No way. Yeah. They're saying these violations were either made up or the FAA is blowing things way out of proportion. So who's right? Well... I can't really say. But what's important is that this brings up some big questions. Fairness, transparency, even if there's any like personal stuff getting mixed up in decisions about space exploration. Because those decisions, they're about safety, but they're also about the future. Exactly. And it gets even more complex when you start thinking about Musk's big vision for SpaceX and how that lines up with, you know, how government agencies usually work. It's a fascinating clash. So it's not just about some fines and delayed launches, huh? There's a bigger story here. Way bigger. This is about Elon Musk, his vision for SpaceX for humanity. It's different from how the government sees things. And Musk is not shy about how he feels about government regulations. Hardening of the arteries, remember that one? Classic. Or how about rules and regulations don't die? He's a funny guy, but he means it. He really believes it. He's got a vision. He doesn't just want to go to space. He wants to colonize Mars. Humanity as a multi-planet species. It's ambitious. To do that, he thinks speed, innovation, that's everything, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And regulations, they get in the way. I mean, I get it. Sometimes it feels like those regulations were written by people who aren't exactly trying to get to Mars anytime soon. But you need the FAA, right, for safety to keep the public on board. Launching rockets, it's risky. We can't just let anyone point one at the sky and hit go. True, true. But is there a way to make it all work, keep people safe, but still let these companies make huge leaps forward. If we want to get to Mars, I mean, really get there, we got to figure that out. It's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. Finding that balance, not just for SpaceX, but for all the space exploration. We're in uncharted territory, right? Private companies are doing things no one's ever done before, hmm. but we still need rules. We need someone making sure it's done right. It's like we're writing the rule book as we go along. <laughs> Which never goes smoothly, but it's a huge opportunity too. Bigger than SpaceX, bigger than the FAA. This is about how we, humanity, are going to explore space. The balance between going for it and being smart about it. So, what does all this mean for you listening right now? Well, next time you see SpaceX or any other space company in the news, remember, it's not just about rockets. It's about that tension, innovation versus regulation. Those who want to break the rules and those who have to make them. And as we keep going further into space... We need to keep talking about this. Look at all sides and ask ourselves, what kind of future do we want for space travel? What's our role in making it happen safely, responsibly? That's something to think about.